Welcome, everyone, to this briefing brought to you by the Israel Defense and Security Forum, IDSF. In Hebrew, name is Abitchonistim. IDSF is the leading Israeli organization advocating for strong national security to defend Israel. Thank you to all of our viewers and all of our supporters for tuning into this briefing so that we can bring you behind the headlines what is really happening here in Israel. We had on General Avivi this week, and there were so many questions uh, that we decided to bring him back again today. Many people follow our schedule that we have. You know that the general comes on Mondays, uh, but uh, we're going to try to bring him on again today in order to really give you an update as to what is happening in the north of Israel. As you probably saw in the news, Hezbollah fired a ballistic missile to Tel Aviv. Uh, there were many rockets fired to the north of Israel, including one that fell in Sfat. So there's a lot to talk about. But before the general comes on, I want to share with you a completely different topic, which is very relevant. And that is, if you're following the news, you've noted that Prime Minister Netanyahu is preparing for a trip to the U.S. where he's going to speak in front of the General Assembly of the U.N. on Friday. And um, we spend a lot of time here at IDSF dealing with international diplomacy, dealing and working very closely with diplomats across the world. And very often when we talk about Israel's need for international support, the focus is on the United States. However, there's a lot of countries out there that can and do provide tremendous strategic value to Israel. And therefore, we at IDSF work with many of them. So very recently, we had a seminar here in Israel with uh, the presence and the participation of a number of countries. And uh, before the general comes on to the briefing to talk about what's happening in the north of Israel, I want to share with you a clip uh, that is from a member of the European Union who is from the Czech Republic. I want you to hear how this man talks about Israel, uh, what he says about cyber, and the relationship that his country and he have with Israel, and it's unbelievable. And when you hear him speak, you understand that there is, in fact, a tremendous value of working with key European countries to build the strategic defense relationship with Israel. So hold on a minute while I put up, pull up this video. Thomas Zhidovsky, um, I had the opportunity to meet uh, for the first time uh, a little bit after in early November. Um, General Vivi and I were meeting with a lot of members of the European Parliament. Some of those meetings were went well, some of those meetings not as well. We met with a um, member of the European Parliament, Zhidovsky. Wow, we just kind of woke up. He, he was someone who just uh, spewed a significant amount of uh, Israel love and Israel appreciation, something that, uh, frankly, we probably can have a football game in the Czech Republic as well. Um, I just got back from Prague about a month or so ago, and everybody was saying, Israelis are always welcome in the Czech Republic. Wear your kippah proudly. Um, and with that, I would very much like to ask you to come up and say a few words. Yeah. After this in, uh, introduction, I can say only hello and go, because really you said everything what I feel from my heart. Uh, you was uh, talking about uh, situation in Hungary, but I can not uh, make any competition. But situation in the Czech Republic is much more better. <laughs> also, you cannot compare it, but uh, I will tell it. Uh, all the people in, uh, from the Jewish community in, in Prague, in Czech Republic, are absolutely secure. We are one of the most secure countries on the world. And we are not talking about any uh, anti-Israel Israel movement. We are speaking only anti-terrorist movement, anti-Hamas movement, anti-Hezbollah movement, anti-all the terrorist movement in my country. But sorry for that, I'm a member of European Parliament. I have to talk about global view in European Parliament. And it's, it is not so nice how was description from the Hungary or from the Czech Republic. But it's reality. What you said about me, of course, I'm very pro-Israel. Everybody knows it in the European Parliament. This is why I'm banned from negotiation of many, uh, many uh, resolution about, uh, about Hamas or about another terrorist group what are linked anti-Israel. You mentioned here many rockets 
attacks against your infrastructure. It's not only uh, Hamas uh, and Hezbollah. It's, uh, it's Iran. But you didn't mention on this conference one important thing. You saw in my CV that I am not only a member of European Parliament, but I am the soldier in the reservist army, and I am responsible for the cybersecurity of my country. But you didn't mention all the cyber attacks that are coming from Iran, from Russia, from China, of course from Gaza, from many, many countries pro-Palestinian oriented, and they attack your infrastructure. This, they are not attacks against the, the Israel army, but they are systematically against your hospitals, against your infrastructure, about your schools, about your university. And this is what I am explaining the people. Wake up in the Europe, because there is 20,000 of rocket attacks but more than 30,000 of the cyber attacks. They are much more worse, because if you are in the emergency situation and the computer will not work, the operation is gone and you will die. Also, this is why I'm talking here and why I take this opportunity to say hello. In the European Union exists some person who is really looking on your security from other perspective. And this is why the Czech Republic is very active and cooperate very closely with Israel as nobody in this planet. This is why our intelligences exchange many information and learn from you. Because, General, your speech was amazing. You are a legend for many people in my country. But uh, you cannot stop terrorists. If you have it, the best intelligences, best camera system, best everything, and it's something what is really growing and what is in the brain of the people, and the brain of these people was washed, also it's very difficult to find the secrecy of this brain and stop them. And of course, you did mistake. Everybody make mistake. If someone will make the same attack in my country, I will tell you that we are not prepared. And I think that Hungary is not prepared. Germany is not prepared. No one is prepared for this brutal situation. This October, through the Israel, open eyes all the military persons in the Europe. I think that this is something that it's crucial to repeat it here. This is not that, um, that uh, Israel history is part of European history. This is much more about that, that you are suffering of uh, many terrorists, many people who are against our values. This is the democracy, human rights, and uh, our uh, um, key value, freedom. I will not repeat it here about anti-Semitism. This is shameful if I go to the Br Brussels and I see that the Jewish school is closed because there is a lot of people who are really are prepared to kill children in 21th century of Jewish origin. It's the shame if I go in Strasbourg, in the seat of European Parliament, and before the synagogue, you need to have it 20 policemen and 15 soldiers with the, with the guns, with the long guns. Also, it's shameful for Europe that the, in the protest in London yesterday, people what were saying, that Hamas is a terrorist organization, they were arrested. And I think that we have to open it. Who is victim and who is really the attacker? And I am absolutely sure that my response will not surprise you. My response will be absolutely clear, that you are in the hardest time of your, of your 
uh, of your democratic history and you need to be supported with us. I'm now the uh, one of most important person in the budgetary about the the uh, school books in uh, in Gaza, in Western Bank, in south of Lebanon, where we're full of anti-Jewish propaganda. I saw the, there the pictures in physics, how to attack the Israel army. And it was paid by European Union. It's not a joke. Some of you started here with jokes, but uh, really it's something what hurt me a lot. We know what was genocide. We know how Hitler took 500,000 of our neighbors. And in five years, we didn't found there. They didn't come back after the Second World War. And we don't want to repeat this situation. From my point of view, most important things is that Hamas will not win. And we have to do a maximum from our point of view me as member of European Parliament, you as diplomat, and you as person who will really establish the bridges and exchange the information how to really fight against th this anti-Israel propaganda in European countries. Because you can imagine that people from the university boycott the, the Israel students because they are doing the genos uh, genocide of, uh, of uh, uh, Palestinian people. Do you understand that? That they don't really take care about this rocket, they don't care about this, this uh, cyber attacks, they don't care about what you are facing, but they are only saying genocide is coming. They make the comparison between Second World War and this situation. And we have really say stop. Stop all the terrorism, ban not only the terrorists and all the terrorist organization in European country. Hamas must be banned, Hezbollah must be banned, all the groups, radical groups in Western Bank must be banned, and zero financing, zero tolerance. I think that we were for a long time, General, we were very naive. And now is the time to act. I don't want to be very long. I don't want to bother you with long speech, but I can promise one thing at the end. I have before me five years as a member of European Parliament. And every time, if you will come back you, you, or someone other to my office. You will have open door and I will help you to raise the truth to the social society, to European Union, to European Parliament, and to European organization. I wish you all best and please take care about your family and stay safe. God bless you. Again, Thomas Lezovsky from the European Union. He is a representative of the Czech Republic. And when you hear about how he speaks about Israel, it's really, truly inspiring and just shows the importance of working with Europe. General, it's good to see you. Thank you for joining. My pleasure. General, maybe before we talk about um, the north of Israel, just maybe a thought about our work with Europe and the importance for Israel's national security. Yes, uh, I think that Israel uh, is very oriented uh, to working with the U.S. Uh, and less focused on, on Europe. And Europe is a very, very important uh, continent. Uh, we saw this uh, problem and we decided in the last uh, year plus to start focusing more and more on work with the European Union. 
for me, uh, last year was the first time that I visited Brussels and visited the headquarters of the European Union. I really didn't know what to expect. And uh, we had, I think in that visit, visit uh, 22 meetings uh, with parliament members. And, and I was amazed to see how many friends Israel has. It's really unbelievable. We always tend to think in Israel that uh, all Europeans are against us, they, they, they attack us and so on. It's, it's not the case at all. And uh, following these meetings and following uh, really uh, the professional uh, connection that we created, uh, we started giving them uh, information and also helping them uh, write resolutions uh, to pass in the European uh, Parliament, and we helped pass a resolution that says that until Hamas is eradicated and all hostages uh, are back home, the war is not going to stop. And uh, it was passed uh, in overwhelming uh, vote uh, in favor in the, in the Parliament. And this means that all we need to do is, is put the effort, put the effort and do the job uh, we went three times to the Italian parliament and we also managed to pass a very meaningful resolution in the Italian parliament. Um, we are in close contact with the Czech Republic, with Hungary, with France, with Britain. I just came back uh, two weeks ago from the British parliament. Um, so really uh, we are deepening our relations uh, with all European uh, countries. Of course, prioritizing, because at the end of the day, it's, uh, we have to prioritize our time and also budget. But we try to really pinpoint the crucial uh, countries uh, that we feel we need to be in touch with. And of course, diplomats here in Israel were in touch um, with the, most of the embassies. They come to our uh, gatherings, and uh, this is really helping Israel. Thank you, General. And hopefully I'll be able to, uh, on one of these soon briefings, share what the representative from Hungary just told us, who was uh, from the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. I think there's a very uh, important message to hear about Hungary's support of Israel. But let's let's talk about Lebanon and what is happening right now in this war. What 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 are the developments since we last spoke? So we have to remember what was the strategy or what is the strategy of uh, Hezbollah from the 8th of October. They started a war of attrition. They connected themselves to Gaza, basically saying, as long as there is a war in Gaza, we'll shoot Israel. And the moment you stop the war, we'll stop shooting. This is basically uh, what Hezbollah and I would say all the militias uh, are doing, but Hezbollah is the biggest pro problem because basically they created the situation that 60,000 Israelis are displaced. And as long as they are shooting and as long as they are present in South Lebanon, we cannot bring back our, uh, our citizens. For 11 months, we had to endure this situation. We, we decided to focus on Gaza, to destroy Hamas as a military entity and a governmental entity. We haven't reached yet the point of destroying Hamas as a governmental entity, but as a military entity, they are pretty much uh, destroyed. Still, a lot of terrorists scattered and able to carry attacks, but not functioning as a military. Um, in the last few weeks, there is an understanding, uh, we, we, which we pushed very hard meeting, with meeting with the Prime Minister and the Minister of Defense, that this is the time to shift the center of gravity to the north. Uh, Israel set a clear goal of war to bring back all the citizens of the north home safely. And for doing that, we need to break this connection between Hezbollah and Hamas. The message is very clear. War of attrition is over. We're not going to agree to any more shooting in the north. We are going to destroy Hezbollah until they stop shooting and withdraw from uh, South Lebanon. So at this stage, Hezbollah is left with two very clear choices. They either say, okay, we stop shoot com shooting completely and we're, we, we, we are withdrawing from South Lebanon, eh, or it's going to be a ground incursion and Israel will attack 
Uh, the ground forces are ready. They have trained a lot. They got all their missions. Uh, the IDF, the, South, the Northern Command, is ready to launch the ground forces on the attack. But at the moment, we're at the stage of degrading and destroying Hezbollah uh, on many different uh, dimensions. Uh, it looks like uh, the strategy um, that was set uh, in the early 2000s, late 90s, uh, by the U.S. Uh, called the shock and all. Um, basically attacking on so many dimensions uh, that the enemy goes into a state of shock. Um, we saw the beeper attacks, we saw the communications, uh, we were seeing how the IDF is constantly toppling all the leadership of Hezbollah, really putting this organization uh, on the verge of uh, existential threat. Um, we are seeing many attacks on their uh, offensive capabilities, uh, on rocket launchers, cruise missiles, uh, drones. Uh, ballistic missiles, uh, uh, the IDF has degraded pretty dramatically their capabilities. It's not that they don't have any more, they do. Uh, but at least until now, the amount of shooting that they did uh, compared to what the IDF is doing, is, is it's a huge, huge difference. Uh, they, they are shooting more into the depths of Israel. They shot one uh, missile to uh, the area of Glilot, near Tel Aviv. But it's not massive at this stage. And, and the question is why? Why aren't they shooting more when we killed 500 people in one day and attacked uh, 1,600 uh, targets in one day? Uh, two answers. One, they have less capabilities, uh, the shock. Uh, but the other thing is um, they understand that if they go all out, we go all out as well. And uh, and uh, the question is, do they feel ready? Do they want a, a full-scale war with Israel attacking uh, constantly Beirut? And uh, I think they feel penetrated. They see um, how much we know about them, about all the locations of their capabilities, about their commanders. And it puts them in a very complicated uh, situation. But I must say that this is an evolving war. We don't really know exactly how they will react and where this is going. So in warfare, there is a very uh, clear uh, thing to do. When you don't know what's going on, the best option, continue attacking. Attack fiercely and don't stop. And this is exactly what Israel is doing, what the IDF is doing. This is the messages we, see, we hear from the chief of staff, from the minister of defense, from the prime minister. Constant attack, all out, uh, really dismantling this organization from day to day. Uh, there is a lot of messages to the Lebanese people saying, we are not fighting you, we are fighting Hezbollah, and also sending them a message that this, this, this is their moment to, to really liberate themselves from this uh, terror organization. We are hoping to see uh, parts of the Lebanese society willing to deal with Hezbollah as they see their capabilities degrading from moment to moment. Um, it's important for me to say that um, as we are seeing these attacks in Lebanon, we are not forgetting Gaza. The IDF is operating in Gaza. We'll see attacks in Gaza, meaningful ones. We are not stopping the war in Gaza. Hamas will be eradicated. We are continuing to attack. Um, I'm very... Um, Happy to see Israeli society getting stronger, happy about uh, really the capabilities that uh, the defense establishment uh, is, is showing. This gives a lot of power to, to the people and a feeling uh, that we can do it. We can win decisively, just as we here in IDSF have said from day one. We are going to win decisively along for all fronts. 
in Gaza, in the north, and when time comes, also Iran. Uh, we can do it. And uh, I think that what we have said from the beginning, it's getting clearer and clearer as the days pass. General, thank you so much for sharing that update. I know your time is very valuable today, as always, so we really appreciate you coming on. Thank you to all of our viewers and all of our supporters for tuning into this briefing. We will be back with you tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. here in Israel. Until then, stay safe, stay strong, take care, everyone.